Okay, let me ask you this. What's the absolute biggest thing you can even picture in the universe? That's a fun question to start with. Hard to wrap your head around, really. Right. Well, today we're diving into something that might just push that boundary. Yeah. A recent discovery, possibly the most massive black hole ever found. And found in a really fascinating structure, too. Exactly. So yeah. our mission here is to unpack this uh, massive find. What does it mean for how we understand galaxies, the universe itself? It's a big one. Yeah, and it all stems from a new paper in monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society focusing on something called the Cosmic Horseshoe. And when we say massive, we really, really mean it. This thing is estimated at uh, 36 billion times the mass of our sun. 36 billion. That's, right. that's almost unbelievable. It really is. It pushes right up against the theoretical maximum size we think black holes can even reach. Wow. And compared to ours. It makes ours look tiny. It's like 10,000 times heavier than Sagittarius A, the black hole at the center of the Milky Way. Okay, mind blown already. And where is this beast hiding? It's in the center of the cosmic horseshoe galaxy. And that galaxy itself is so massive, it, well, it visibly warps space-time around it. You mean gravitational lensing? Precisely. It bends the light from an even more distant galaxy behind it into this incredible stretched-out horseshoe shape an Einstein ring. Like a giant cosmic magnifying glass showing us something behind it. Exactly that. It's pretty spectacular. So, okay, detecting the galaxy makes sense with that lensing, but how do you find the black hole inside it? Especially if it's like dormant and not shining brightly and it's five billion light years away. Yeah, that's the really clever part. You're right, it's not like a quasar actively gobbling up matter and blasting out light, it's quiet. So how'd they do it? Well, they used a combination of things. First, that lensing effect you mentioned is key. It magnifies the light from the horseshoe galaxy itself, not just the one behind it. Ah, okay. So the lens helps us see the host galaxy better too. Yes, it gives us a much closer look than we'd normally get at that distance. Then, they use something called stellar kinematics. Stellar kinematics. Absolutely. That's studying how stars move, right? Exactly. By looking at the light magnified by the lensing, they could measure how fast stars were orbiting right near the center of the cosmic horseshoe galaxy. And they were moving fast. Incredibly fast. Almost 400 kilometers per second, just zipping mm. around. Ooh. And that speed, that intense gravitational pull needed to keep stars moving that fast in tight orbits, well... That tells you the mass of the object at the very center. The ultra-massive black hole. That's how they confirmed it and got that staggering 36 billion solar mass figure. It's a technique we use closer by, but the lensing let them apply it much, much further away. That's really ingenious. So finding something this huge and dormant, mm -hmm. what does that tell us more broadly about how galaxies and these monster black holes, you know, grow up together. It tells us a lot, actually. It reinforces this really fundamental connection, this coevolution between galaxies and their central supermassive black holes. We think their growth is linked. How so? Well, as galaxies merge and grow, they feed gas and stars towards the center. This feeds the black hole, obviously. Now you're making it bigger. But also sometimes making it shine as a quasar. And those quasars can be so powerful, the energy they blast out can actually blow gas out of the galaxy, effectively shutting down star formation. Ah, that feedback loop idea. The black hole influences the whole galaxy's future. Precisely. It's a regulatory mechanism in a way. And the cosmic horseshoe galaxy is particularly interesting because it's what we call a fossil group. A fossil group. What does that mean? It means it's likely the result of an entire group of galaxies merging together over billions of years into one single giant galaxy. It's like the end state of that group's evolution. So all the smaller galaxies got swallowed up. That's the idea. And presumably their central black holes merged too, contributing to this one ultra-massive monster we see today. It's the culmination of countless mergers. Wow. So we're seeing the, the end of a long cosmic story. Hey, That's yeah. quite profound. It really highlights the scale and just the cleverness needed to find these silent giants. It really does. It pushes our understanding of these extreme objects and how they tie into the grand scheme of galaxy evolution. Okay, so here's a final thought for you, something to chew on. We know our own Milky Way is set to collide and merge with Andromeda in, what, about 4.5 billion years? That's the current estimate, yeah. And scientists think that merger could reignite our own supermassive black hole, maybe turn it into a quasar for a while. It's a definite possibility. Mergers are prime time for feeding black holes. So thinking about the cosmic horseshoe as this end state, this fossil group, what might that tell us, potentially, about the ultimate fate of our own local group, 
way, way down the line, billions of years after we merge? That is a fantastic question to ponder. Looking at systems like the horseshoe, these extreme cases, really helps us frame the possibilities for our own cosmic future, doesn't it? It shows the potential endpoints. It certainly makes you think about the sheer scale and the cycles of the universe. Absolutely. And it just underscores how much more there is to discover, how these findings constantly reshape our picture of the cosmos and its most powerful players, keeps things interesting,